And we are back. Pokemon Emerald, Hardcore Nuzlocke, only using grass types this time around. We start this episode off going into Route 111, the Sandstorm area, and we're going to go ahead and secure that Cacnea encounter. The Cacturn having the dark typing and leaning into the special attack that that will provide for this run could be incredibly impactful. So we grabbed the little cactus, and then we got one more first encounter right around here in the Mirage Tower, and then it is on to Norman, our father, for that fifth gym badge. All right, speaking of which, in the Mirage Tower, we get the Root Fossil, which is going to turn into the Tiny Little Lyleep and eventually the Cradily. So one of the only Pokemon that won't be super effective against flying types because it's going to have that rock grass typing. So pretty cool stuff there. Let's go ahead and revive that fossil. And that means we're only missing the Tropius. Let's keep this run going. If there was ever a gym that had just random trainers in it that could absolutely kill one, two, if not three of your Pokemon, it's got to be Norman's normal type gym. It, it's just insane the amount of firepower they have. They also usually use X attack or some dire hit to buff the critical chance. There's a Zangoose in here with Swords Dance. It's just terrifying. And this Wigglytuff with a stab double edge gets a critical hit on our ace our ace up our sleeve, our dark knight, whatever you want to call him, Rustboro. She holds on though, and we are sitting here. I'm like, if this doesn't kill the chunky Wigglytuff, it is all over. Thankfully, we clutch it there, and we are very, very careful not to lose anybody leading up to that Norman gym battle. All right, it is time to take on our father, Norman, for that fifth gym badge. He focuses mainly on normal type Pokemon, and I do believe... We're just going to lean into that same strategy we did in the fourth gym against Flannery and her fire type Pokemon. We're just going to completely nuke this opening Spinda with some debuffs on the accuracy side of things um, and just ramp up with the Breloom. That's really just going to be what we do here. And if we can clear this guy, we're going to be looking really good. And then the next hurdle is going to be that sixth gym against those flying type Pokemon and Winona. So that one's going to be super interesting. I'm going to see if I can get that Ice Beam for the Lombre uh, prior to that so we can have a much better time. But right here, right now, the Spinda comes down, and I think we're just going to open with the Sleep Powder. This Ice Beam actually comes down, does good damage, and gets the Confusion Roll, which is not great. But we did come prepared with the Berry, so we pop out of that, and we do land the sleep powder which is just gorgeous so that's really nice we're going to pivot into the cagnia now the lava ridge here and we're going to get some sand attacks down now our uh special defense is absolute garbage it's like 26 right now it's the lowest stat line on our little cactus here but we get one sand attack we're gonna see how many sand attacks we can get down here we could have really just tried to um steamroll with the bulk ups on the breloom but i was just nervous of getting some really bad rolls um with the side beam or the teeter dance so we are just going to roll this as much as we can we got four sand attacks down and the teeter dance still connects so maybe we can get a fifth we have not popped this berry yet so we snap out of that confusion and if we can just get one more accuracy deep up there we go beautiful stuff looking really good there we could go for a cheese on the leech seed but i think it's okay just to go into slate port one more time and then hopefully not get hit and uh, just get a sleep powder to open the door for Breloom as the facade does miss, which is absolutely beautiful. But the side beam comes down, no critical, no critical, beautiful, no confusion, and the sleep powder comes down. So definitely flirting with it there, but I think we're going to be just fine. So now the stage is set for Rustboro, our Breloom. The hero here really is the Dark Knight of this run as we get one bulk up in. There is one. We're just going to go for five of these bad boys and just completely ramp up. We're not going to mess with anything. We're just going to completely one-shot everything in the way here. I do not think that Slacking could live. Um, I don't think Slacking could live a bulk up, a six times bulked up um, Breloom here. So I'm feeling pretty confident in this. I mean, we can still cheese that first turn of the Slaking uh, if we are too scared of a potential counter. But other than that, I'm feeling really good. Even the Linoon with... Uh, belly drum is going to be no problem. There is that third person berry really paying off, just showing you how cool it is when Emerald gives you those berries with the little trees, the little plants on the side. But I think we are good to go. The stage is set once again. Spinda goes down in one. We are maxed out attack on Breloom, who already has a ridiculously high physical attack stat. The Vigoroth comes down, and we, on top of that, we have priority with the Mock Punch, which is just beautiful. So we're doing 60 stab times two for that 
120 power off of that super effective damage, and we are just one-shotting everything we see. And now is an interesting part here. If Slaking goes for... I don't think he can one-shot us. So it might be smart just to do a Leech Seed just in case and then go all in on the loafing turn. So let's just do that. It dodges the Leech Seed. It does go for the counter. So let's see if this was going to kill. Okay, it was. But I mean, you could just imagine holding on with one HP and then the Slaking or Slacking turns around with a counter and it just crits through all the bulk up. The odds of that happening were probably pretty low, but we would have to go all the way back to the start and we have invested so much into this run i do believe this is attempt number seven or eight i've lost count at this point but with that win we are right into the mid game working our way to the late game here and uh let's get one more encounter it is going to be the tropius and that will finish off all of our encounters for this run which is just crazy but let's keep it going for our final first encounter of the run, it's going to be our eighth team member, the Tropius, found in the rain on Route 119. We're going to go ahead and chuck the Ultra Ball and secure it. All right, we have another rival fight against May right here, right before Fortree City. And this fight is honestly pretty easy um, in a normal hardcore Nuzlocke where you have multiple Pokemon, multiple answers to her team. But we're all grass here and her having the Pelipepper as well as the Combuskin is just not fun. I absolutely adore the water flying typing. I think it's just so crisp as we get four times super affected by the wing attack. And that is not what you want to see. We were definitely hoping, we were definitely hoping that the Pelipepper would be asleep for one more turn. And now we are in a really tough spot. If we go for Leech Seed and Heal, we might cheese the wing attack. If it crits, we definitely lose somebody. But we also got to remember Breloom's four times while the rest of the team is only two times. And Pelipepper is not known for its physical attack. So we're really thinking about this. We could roll it all on a return. We could go for it. It actually goes for protect. So we could have went for bulk up there and completely punished May, but I had no idea that's what she was going for. But thankfully, the silk scarf and the bulk ups was enough to take down the pelican. And now the combuskin comes down. And do we can just roll the return again, or we can pivot into Pedalberg, who gets that water boosted attack in the rain here because of the perma rain so that is actually beautiful we get the fake out just for a little bit of reprieve the surf comes down and is two times in the storm beautiful stuff and now it is lombre versus lombre and we can swap into something more favorable and i do believe it's going to be slayport tanking the fake out no issues there we do have the super effective stab poison move acid coming in here it's just going to be a two tap no problems we tank two swifts from the lombre Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, that just leaves Winona. But wait, there's more. It wouldn't be an episode on the channel without Ellis getting a little bit too comfy cozy and just playing around with that Kecleon that Steven helps you uncover right there on the bridge. And um, I'm just taking this real easy and I'm like, okay, let's get the Kecleon. Lives on one HP, comes down with a five piece combo meal leaves us at 7 HP with the Fury Swipes. I have never. We were that close to losing our Sceptile. My goodness, what have I done? Let's go ahead and beat Winona and get out of here. All right, it is time to take on that 6th Gen Leader, Winona, and her Flying-type Pokemon. Our team is in trouble as she can hit basically everyone for super effective damage. So two pivotal mistakes I think I made leading up to this was not evolving the Vile Plume. Instead, I elected for the Shiftry, who really just makes a second CAC turn, if that makes sense. So I think it would have been more helpful to have uh, better stats on the Gloom, especially for this fight. But we're just going to have to wing that. On top of that, I needed to bring Lyleap, but uh, we're chilling at like level 25, 26, and we don't have Fly, so I'd have to go all the way back to like Rustboro Tunnel to grind up on some Wismers to get some HP EVs, and it's just a whole thing. And um, since I don't have Fly, I'd have to run all the way back and spend some hours doing that. So instead, I'm going to risk it all with the team that I have right here right now. I don't think Grovile is going to be very helpful. I think it's going to be incredibly risky to throw uh, Breloom out there. Um, so I'm not 100% sure, but this is the watershed moment. This is the fight. If we can beat her without losing anybody, my goodness, I think our chances of winning this run go through the absolute roof. 
but I am expecting probably at least one casualty. We did see Flygon HG in his challenge a long time ago. He made it uh, out of this fight with only four Pokemon uh, to his name and was able to beat the Elite Four with those four. So depending on who goes down, I think that also makes a difference. But we do have the Ice Beam. We're going to try to growl down the Pelipepper. We're going to try to set up with either the Cacturn or the Shiftry. Uh, we have Flashes um, to see if we can do the Accuracy debuff strat. Uh, like we did with the Flannery Gym. So there's going to be a whole lot going on here. Just really, if we dodge the crits, it, it's GG. But if crits happen, we're really just going to be pushed to the brink. On top of that, confusion is going to play a big role as well. All of that precap out of the way. Let's get rid of this Swablu who does have Parish Song. So we're just going to have to two-tap with the Ice Beam. Oh my god, it responds with the Mirror Move Ice Beam as well. But thankfully that didn't do a ton of damage. And the Swablu goes down. And now the battle really begins. Pelipper comes down. We have the only person berry on Petalburg here, the Lombre. We only had one Confusion Berry left. So when she does land that Supersonic, it, it will pop, which will be beautiful. So two growls down. We're going for the third. We are slower, but thankfully Pelipper cannot land this on Petalbury. It is a beautiful thing. The supersonic really showing how pitiful a 55% accuracy move is as it's almost a coin flip every single time. And I, I am so baffled here that I, I thought I used too many growls. Okay, so I actually looked at the 33 out of 40. Um, I may have... Okay, I'm just going to risk it. He may be out of growl. Okay, we're good. We are absolutely good. Um, and now I believe we just we can't use Flash on the Pelipper because he has keen eye or she has keen eye. So it'll just do nothing. All right, so we can't lower that accuracy. So now I do believe we just go into Slateport, the Gloom, and hopefully don't get crit through that six times growl. And there is the aerial ace and there is the critical hit. It's an absolute farce. It's an absolute farce. The crit comes down, and um, I think we roll it all on the sleep powder. Let's go for it. Don't crit. Don't crit. Beautiful. But we missed the sleep powder. We're going to go for one more. Don't crit. Thank you. One more. There we go. That's all we need, baby girl. And now we go for the setup. Let's see here. Let's see here. I think we actually go with the Cacturn since we have Leech Seed. We go with the Cacturn. And I believe we get the Leech Seed down first. Can we land this? The Supersonic comes down. Unbelievable. The, the Pelican finally lands, and we hurt ourselves, and this is a this is atrocious. This is egregious. Don't crit. Hold on, baby girl. Lava Rage, you've got this. Oh, my God. This is brutal. Do you believe? Yes, we snap out of confusion. We get the Leech Seed. We're going to get some health back here. Pelipper goes for a pathetic water gun, which is beautiful. The Leech Seed's going to help out. And now let's try to ramp up. My gosh, this is just an absolute train wreck, but... This is what happens when you have six grass types against flying types. And there we go. The strat is coming in. One growth down. Can we get to in another supersonic lands? This is ridiculous. And we earn ourselves again. The double damage of hurting ourselves plus the Pelipper damage is in trouble. And if he crits, if she crits through, we are so in trouble. Please, Lava Ridge, please be better than you are right now. The Leech Seed might buy us an extra turn if Pelipper goes into the red. We do have the Citrus Berry for Reprieve, which is huge. And then the Protect does buy us a chance to use the Growth. I will take this. Oh my goodness, the stress levels are out of this world. World. The Altaria is still waiting in the back, and another Super Sonic connects. My gosh! And we hurt ourselves yet again. We don't have a Citrus Berry. All I want, all I ever wanted. There we go. There's the protect. We have a perfect opportunity here, Cacturn. Yes, we can. Let's get that plus six. This is not the cleanest strategy, but right here we should be bought another turn with the heal. Absolutely, Winona playing right into our hands, and we snap out of confusion. There we go. Give me that momentum. Let's go. So there, I believe, was the fourth growth we are going for max special attack since dark type moves are special. There's the aerial ace, no crit, beautiful stuff. And if we can just get one more growth, there is the protect. Gorgeous. Finally, we are maxed out special attack. And the Pelipper should go down here. Let's see what happens. The Water Gun comes in. No problem. The Water Gun crits, thankfully. That wasn't the Aerial Ace. Beautiful. And we are okay. So there we go. If the Cacturn outspeeds anyone, we should be able to one-shot. 
So if Cacturn is faster, this should be a one shot. Let's see how good that plus six fan attack is. And it is gorgeous. Great stuff there. The Altaria comes down. Can this one shot that special defense is so bulky? There is the dragon dance. I am I am very nervous right now. Please one shot. Please be the one. And it absolutely does. All of those supersonics, all of those crits. Here is the Skarmory though, and I don't think this is not very effective, so I don't think this can one-shot the Skarmory. I don't think it can. Um, and if it just blitzes down Aerial Ace, we could be in trouble. But because we are plus six, I think we still roll this and we should be faster. So I think oh my god, we're not. We are slower than the Skarmory, but that was just barely enough to hold on. And there is the Skarmory. And I think Winona has another Hyper Potion. I think she does. So I, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to Leech Seed. And then Faint Attack again. But what if the Leech Seed misses? And what if she doesn't heal? We should just roll the Faint Attack then. Um, but the Leech Seed will give us heal back. And if this goes poorly, we'll have another person with the Leech Seed already down. Um, yeah, I'm going to roll it. I'm going to go Leech Seed. Okay, there is the heal. This could be everything. Could Can you connect Lava Ridge? You absolutely can't. We blunder to the heavens. We blunder to the heavens, and I should have just went Faint Attack. I should have just went Faint Attack. Oh my god, Skarmory is faster. So 49. A Grovile is way fast, but can't really hit with anything. Oh my god, this is this is uh this is bad. This is bad news. This is really bad. I think we're gonna have to sacrifice. We can roll another faint attack. But I, I think I might have just lost somebody because of because of that. Um if it goes Aerial Ace and we heal, Sand Attack, Fury Attack, Steel Wing. Oh my god, what have I done? We could just go Faint Attack again. Uh, Yeah, and then if we go, yeah, I'll just do Faint Attack. Oh my god, Faint Attack is beautiful because the Sand Attack doesn't affect because it's 100% accuracy. Oh my god, and it Fade Away crits. Are you absolutely serious right now? I didn't deserve it. But, but I will take it absolutely. Oh my gosh. I feel like we got so lucky there. But I I will take that. No casualties. And now it just leaves the 7th and 8th gym. And we're going to be walking in there with two dark types against primarily psychic type Pokemon. So that is beautiful for the 7th gym. And then we have six grass types um, essentially against water types for the 8th gym. So that is actually fantastic. Um, that was ridiculous. And, uh, I, uh, as always, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. And I will catch you on the flip. Peace.